everybody, Gabby here. Today is an exciting day because Pokemon has revealed the rule set that'll be used for Series 6 and Series 7 online for the Battle Stadium ladder in Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield. Now, Series 6 will run from September 1st until September 30th, and Series 7 will run from October 1st to October 31st. So, very similar to the format of the ladder as we've seen so far. You know, every ranking period lasts about a month. And normally, this time of year, any rule changes that we would receive, I would assume they would be the rules going forward for VGC. However, Given that this is kind of a weird year, I don't really feel comfortable making that assumption, but since we are all ladder warriors at heart this season, I thought it would be really interesting to not only go over the rules, but talk about some of the adjustments you'll have to make. If you haven't seen the rules already, Pokemon has decided to ban the top 16 Pokemon used across both the singles and the double format. This list of Pokemon that you see on the screen is kind of a big deal, you know? These are the Pokemon that are the most used. I mean, Incineroar finally being banned in a VGC format where its Pokedex number was technically allowed. That's like groundbreaking right there. Also, you know, Venusaur, Torkoal, Tyranitar, that's most of GG Core, which is like my favorite team right now. Togekiss. These are some very devastating bands. So I hope that you'll watch this video as we play a little use this, not that for your favorite Pokemon going into series six and series seven. Like always, if you like this content, don't forget to praise the algorithm, like, comment, and subscribe. And with that out of the way, let's get started. So the first two Pokemon that I would like to discuss who are on the ban list for the Series 6 and Series 7 format are Venusaur and Rillaboom. Both of these Pokemon are Grass-type attackers, Venusaur on the special side, Rillaboom on the physical side. Rillaboom also has access to Grassy Terrain and Grassy Glide, which has been really devastating over the past couple months on the ladder. I don't think you're going to be getting much Grassy Glide usage moving forwards. I think that since the only way you can really set terrain at this point in time is via max overgrowth, it's not going to be as viable anymore, but there certainly are some amazing grass type attackers you can consider to take the place of Venusaur and Rillaboom on your existing Series 5 teams. Amoongus with Spore is probably the one I would recommend the most to people who really like Venusaur. It still gets redirection, Spore covers your sleep powder spot, arguably even better than Venusaur because you don't have to worry about accuracy at the cost of its speed, but I, I don't think that's necessarily a downside. You could also consider running some physical grass type Pokemon, so Ferrothorn and Verizian are the two Pokemon that I'd recommend considering there. And also shout outs to Ludicolo, Serena, and Lilligant. These are all Pokemon that can play sort of similar to how Venusaur and Rillaboom played in the previous series. And if you're looking to fill that grass type hole in your heart, I'd recommend checking them out. The next two Pokemon I'd like to discuss from this ban list are Gyarados and Incineroar. Now, these two Pokemon together were used a lot to spam Intimidate to lower the attack power of any physical attackers on the opposing side of the field. Fortunately, there are a ton of viable Intimidate users still in this format. Arcanine, Hitmontop, Luxray, Stoutland, Crocodile, Scrafty, and Toracat, which isn't technically Incineroar, so it's still allowed, are all Pokemon you can consider if you really want to have that Intimidate user on your team to apply pressure. Obviously, Toracat is probably the easiest one-to-one -one replacement for Incineroar because you still get Parting Shot and you still have Intimidate and Fake Out and... Really, other than the speed stat and the item that it holds, it can effectively play the same as an Incineroar. If you're looking to replace the Intimidate user on your team, I'd highly recommend you figure out what you were using that Intimidate for. If it was on a Pokemon that you were looking to use damage, then consider something like Arcanine or Stoutland or Crocodile. If you were looking for more disruption a la the Incineroar option, Toracat, Scrafty, Hitmontop are the Pokemon that you really should be considering in that spot. 
Now let's talk about Porygon 2, Mimikyu, and the absence of trick room setters. Or maybe I should say the relative continuation of the reign of Dusclops, praise be. <laughs> Losing Porygon 2 is unfortunate. It's one of the bulkiest trick room setters in the format. It uses Eviolite spectacularly, it has Recover, it has Tri-Attack, it has Thunderbolt, Ice Beam. It's just like a really great Swiss Army Knife type Trick Room Setter. But I'm a Dusclops player, like I don't really care that Porygon 2 is gone. So there are plenty of alternatives if that's the uh, route that you were going on your team. Hatterin, Gothitelle, Gengar, Bronzong, and Comfy as well could also be viable Trick Room users, but... Given the loss of a lot of the ghost and dark type attackers that people were relying on commonly to stop Dusclops, I, I really think this is going to be the reign of Dusclops going forward in the format. So even if you're not planning on running Trick Room yourself as a central part of your strategy, please make sure that you have some kind of counter to it on your team because you're going to be running into that a lot. The next three Pokemon I'd like to discuss are our sand users. Now, Tyranitar and Excadrill are probably the two most common Pokemon that were used for this purpose, but Hippowdon, not so popular in doubles, but very popular in singles. With the absence of all three of these Pokemon, it's going to make using sand as a central strategy to your team fairly difficult. But I personally think that as the metagame has evolved over Series 4 and Series 5, people have been taking a step back from that in general, so I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. You can still set Sand via Max Rockfall or Gigalith, and if you think way back to like Series 3, Series 4, Rhyperior was a very prominent weakness policy user that would just set up its own Sand via Max Rockfall. Those kind of strategies aren't really going to be affected. If you're looking for other Rock-type coverage, you can also consider using Terrakion, which I think is going to be very huge despite the absence of Whimsicott, which we'll get to in a little bit. Colossal, Mudsdale even, as a ground rock kind of coverage to replace place a Tyranitar and Excadrill in one Pokemon. That's also a horse. In addition to that, you can also consider going Diggersby, Gastrodon, Sandaconda, or Crookedile. These are all Pokemon that get that similar kind of coverage without really being Tyranitar as itself. Crookedile is also a very interesting Pokemon because in the past it's been used as a kind of substitute for a Tyranitar. It doesn't get the special defense boost that being a rock type in sand affords, but it does get access to Intimidate and Moxie, which are incredible abilities that I think are a pretty fair trade-off. Um, Ryota used it in Worlds back a couple years ago, and it was a very strong Pokemon then, and I think it's really going to have an intimidating presence now, so keep that one on your radar. All right, let's talk firepower, because Torkoal and Cinderace are gone. Actually, one of my friends, Mia, just texted me with Cinderace is gone with like the crab dance meme. So, you know, people are very excited about that. <laughs> Hi, Mia. So what do you do if you want to run fire type Pokemon and you can't run Torkoal or you can't run Cinderace? Well, do I have news for you? Because the fire type is still fairly viable. It's not like Torkoal's Drought ability was the core of Firepower being good in this format. I think it's more just the Pokemon that have access to those stabbed fire moves in addition to the ability to set up Sun. You can still set up Sun via a Ninetales. Ninetales is also a lot faster than Torkoal, so even though it plays a little bit differently, you can still use that to your advantage. You could also just Dynamax and use Max Flare and set up the Sun. I, I don't think that's necessarily a deterrent. It is unfortunate that you may not be able to use strategies like Drought and Chlorophyll, so Torkoal and Venusaur, as easily, but you could consider running something like Ninetales Lilligan if that's really the strategy you want to go after. In terms of Fire-type attackers, if you're just looking to have that type coverage, you want that firepower, 
Yeah, I'm, I'm on a roll this morning. Uh, you could consider running Alolan Marowak or a more Trick Room kind of fire type Pokemon. Uh, Centiscorch as well would be interesting in that role and it does still get access to its Gigantamax form. Volcarona, Charizard, Talonflame, Colossal, and Rotom H are also really good fire type Pokemon that have been proven in the past and are relatively faster so you don't have to worry as much about maybe the speed control that you would worry about when you were playing with cinderace uh, since th that natural speed is just there if you were using cinderace as more of a fast dynamax stat booster user so maybe you are running the max quake or max steel spike or even max darkness i'd highly recommend looking at durant Durant was used as that role in the past, but then was rapidly dropped when Cinderace made an appearance. So it has the same feel, it has the same like play style, but it's a steel ant type Pokemon instead of a fire bunny. So, you know, there, there's a pros and cons to all of these. Another interesting Pokemon that was banned was Whimsicott, which was the most prevalent prankster user out of all the prankster users in the game. It has access to Taunt, Tailwind, Moonblast, uh, you know, user's choice, like Helping Hand, maybe, probably not. Encore. <laughs> it had a lot of different moves, and depending on what kind of team you were running, you could sort of make it fit. Fortunately, there are still many good Prankster users that you could consider. Grimmsnarl, Meowstic, Klefki, Liopard, Sableye, Riolu. They all have different ways you play them, but they can all utilize Prankster to their advantage in that regard. So if you are a person who relies a lot on Whimsicott for speed control, for example, maybe consider Meowstic or Grimmsnarl because they get access to Prankster Thunder Wave, which is more difficult to set up than a Tailwind, but you still have the option of playing that speed control game. And if you memorize your speed tiers or otherwise just get that like gut intuition feeling that I rely on, <laughs> you can prioritize which Pokemon you want to try and paralyze. So it still effectively plays the same. If you were running Whimsicott for weather control, there are still Rain Dance and Sunny Day users that also get access to Prankster, so that's still something that you can consider. I think the biggest loss is just the loss of Prankster Tailwind, so you can play around that. Now let's talk Togekiss. <laughs> oh, Togekiss, your reign on the VGC 2020 metagame as a whole has been absolutely incredible. We've seen you go from Serene Grace, Babbery to Super Luck, Critical Hit Everything, and everywhere in between. Alas, we must now say goodbye. But your impact will not be forgotten. If you're looking to replace Togekiss on your team, this is similar to the Incineroar and the Gyarados. You have to identify what role Togekiss was playing. If you were using Togekiss as a super luck flying type user, just really looking to deal that flying type damage, I have really good news for you. There is still a Pokemon that gets access to super luck and is a flying type in this format. <laughs> and it is unpheasant. It is a physical attacker instead of special, so you lose the opportunity to not only get a crit, but maybe even get a flinch as well. But lucky for you, it learns dual wing beat, so you could just hit the Pokemon twice and have two chances to crit. That being said, I, I don't think Unpheasant is really the Pokemon that you want to be considering to replace your Togekiss. Instead, maybe consider Pokemon like Braviary, which is a flying type Pokemon with Defiant. It's fairly bulky. Uh, Halucha is an interesting substitution. Unfortunately, you can't run the Psychic Seed or Grassy Seed plus the Unburden ability to boost its speed as easily as you could in the previous format because Rillaboom and Ndidi are gone. But it's still possible. It's hard, but you could still do it. And also Corviknight is another amazing flying type user that you should consider in this format that feels as bulky as Togekiss did, 
Obviously, there are other flying type Pokemon that you could use to get access to Max Airstream if that was maybe your form of speed control that you liked. Corviknight, Talonflame, Braviary, Halucha, and Charizard, not to repeat myself, are really the Pokemon that you would expect to see in this format right now with Max Airstream as a speed control and as a damage option. But you could also consider running something like an Inteleon, which gets access to Air Slash has the sniper ability and has a base 120 speed as that max airstream fast pokemon you could consider running swoobat <laughs> i'm not kidding by the way like i think that some people are gonna experiment with inteleon and swoobat as their speed control pokemon because i mean swoobat has base 114 speed it, it's just insane it's probably not as bulky as something like a togekiss neither is inteleon but with dynamax that's not as big of a deal anymore and the last pokemon i'd consider if you were looking to use max airstream and you wanted to be a little bit more niche than swoobat would be cramorant you know base 85 speed still actually faster than gyarados so if if you were using Gyarados as a water flying type Pokemon with Max Airstream, why not give Assault Vest Cramorant a try? Indeedee being banned from Series 6 and Series 7 is also an interesting adaptation. Psychic Terrain was really detrimental to a lot of Prankster users, and I think that's why Prankster just was slowly falling off in popularity as Series 5 progressed. I think that's going to change. But there are still some Pokemon that can make use of the move Psychic Terrain to set up Psychic Terrain rather than just having that ability that would set it up for you. War Beetle, Slowbro, Meowstic, which ironically also gets Prankster, so you can just, you know, take away your Prankster, I guess, to get up Psychic Terrain. Oranguru, Reuniclus, and Gardevoir were the Pokemon that jumped out at me. Reuniclus is interesting because a lot of times people were using it as a Trick Room Dynamax Sweeper. And if you could find room on your team for Trick Room somewhere else, you could consider running uh, Psychic Terrain as the move that becomes Max Guard when you Dynamax. That's kind of cool. I don't think Psychic Terrain will be as popular as a result, but there's certainly other Pokemon you could run to consider having it. In terms of redirection alternatives, and this also overlaps with, you know, one of the functions that Togek has brought, Clefairy and Clefable are, I think, the two Pokemon that jumped out to me immediately. Clefairy especially with Friend Guard and Eviolite access, that's just a really amazing Pokemon to have in your toolbox. Also gets after you if you were in a Trick Room situation and you didn't have a Trick Room Resetter Pokemon, you could just use Clefairy, who's super slow, after you, and now all your fast Pokemon can at least attack before they get hit from your opponent. Riolu is something that's been picking up interest as of late with Coaching. So Coaching and Follow Me is a really decent protection sort of structure for its partner. I think that'll be a really interesting Pokemon to follow the development of. And Rage Powder users. So Amoongus and Volcarona are the two that, again, jumped out at me immediately. Volcarona hasn't been seeing much usage as of right now, just because I think there were other Pokemon allowed that performed its functions better. You know, fire type, bug type, and then also this like redirection thing. But with the lack of Tyranitar now, I think Volcarona is something to watch out for. Uh, also, Tangrowth and Butterfree do get access to redirection. Uh, Tangrowth is a very slow, bulky, grass-type Pokemon that you could consider if you don't feel like running the Amoongus for whatever reason. And Butterfree is really going to be your best alternative for a fast Sleep Powder user, so consider those Pokemon if you're looking for something to functionally sort of replace the Ndidi. Interestingly enough, Magnezone is also on the ban list, which is a surprise to me. I didn't realize it was that popular in the singles format. In doubles, it was slowly ticking up in popularity, I think primarily in response to Togekiss being a big thing and steel typing just being really solid overall. The lack of Magnezone I don't think is going to hurt many people in doubles. I don't really see it being something that a lot of people were really building for on their team. However, you know, Steel-type and Electric-type are still really powerful types to have access to, 
but there's plenty of Pokemon you could consider if you're looking to run you know, those types on your team. For Steel-type Pokemon, I'd consider Corviknight, Duraludon, Ferrothorn, Bisharp, and even Cobalion would be really interesting Pokemon to consider putting in that spot. And if you're looking for Electric-type Pokemon, I'd consider Toxtricity, Dracozolt, any of the Rotom forms, just any of them, take your pick, you know, good type coverage, good Pokemon. Luxray and even Boltund. And the reason why I bring up Luxray and Bolton is because Luxray gets access to Intimidate, again, something that might be harder to put on your team in this format. And Bolton is very fast. He's a very fast doggo. I believe he gets base 120 speed, which is just insane. And also gets access to Competitive, which is an amazing ability. You know, I can't stress it enough. It's so good. So if you're looking for something a little bit different to run as the electric type Pokemon on your team, definitely consider the good dog. One last attribute of Togekiss that I'd like to cover, and really Mimikyu too, to a certain extent, is the lack of fairy type coverage that the absence of these two Pokemon bring. Having access to Moonblast, Dazzling Gleam, and Play Rough are probably the three best fairy type moves in the format right now. But there are alternatives that function the same way, and maybe even arguably a little bit better. Primarina, Hatterin, Azumarill, Sylveon, Gardevoir, Alcremi, Galarian Weezing, <laughs> digging a little bit deep on that one, and Grimmsnarl are Pokemon that get access to fairy-type attacking moves and could be really viable in this format given some of these changes. So. If you were looking for a physical type fairy user, I believe Grimmsnarl and Azumarill are the two that I would consider if I were you. Sylveon and Gardevoir with access to the Pixelate ability with Hyper Voice are two really good fairy type attacking options. If you're looking for something to match more of the bulky Togekiss kind of play style, a Primarina is an amazing choice. It gets access to Moonblast and is also just a really strong water type Pokemon, so that might be a good option if you're looking to fill that void. And Hatterin, G-Max Hatterin, still very good. Normal Hatterin, still very good. Still a very strong fairy type Pokemon if you're willing to run a slower Trick Room oriented strategy. And last but not least, let's discuss Dragapult. It's gone, and I'm kind of happy about that. <laughs> Dragapult's role in the metagame was really to be a fast dragon ghost type user, also getting access to max airstream, which we've already spoken about. If you're looking for Pokemon to fill the ghost type role on your team. There are two moves that I'd consider, and this is because Phantom Force was only available to Mimikyu and Dragapult, and unfortunately both of those have been banned. I'd consider Pokemon with Shadow Ball, which is a special type move as opposed to Phantom Force, which was physical, or Poltergeist. The downside is that both of these moves don't have the benefit of removing your Pokemon from the field for one turn, but they're still decent. You know, Shadow Ball has a decent base power. Poltergeist's base power really depends on what item your opponent is holding, but can still be very powerful. So if you're looking to highlight some Shadow Ball users, I'd highlight Palisand, Aegislash, Reuniclus, all of these Pokemon are on the slower side, could be more beneficial in Trick Room. Alakazam, Sylveon, Espeon, fast Pokemon, great special attackers overall. And if you're looking for something with Poltergeist, I'd consider Alolan, Marowak, Delmize, Frostlass, who could actually run either. Its attack and special attack are identical. I just put it under the Poltergeist column because there were less Pokemon there. Trevenant and Decidueye? Maybe this is your time. I, I want to give you this chance, Decidueye. I really do. I really do. Go forth. Go forth and take it. And if you were looking for a Dragon-type Pokemon just for that really great defensive typing and overall, like, core Pokemon on your team, you could always consider running Dracovish, Dracozolt, Gudra, Kingdra, which are all Pokemon that have done really well going up to this format. But also Dragalge, who's picking up in popularity. 
Hydreigon, which has done amazing in past formats, also has stab dark type access, which is something that you're losing with Tyranitar. Como O and Drampa, Pokemon that have done well in the past, but haven't really found their place in the current format yet. These are all really good options. So that's it for today's video. I've talked for about 30 minutes. I don't know how long I'm gonna cut this down to, but thank you so much for sticking with me. I really, really appreciate the support. My next video, I'm going to be talking about some of the threats that are going to emerge in this metagame because of this ban list. So tell me down in the comments, you know, what are you expecting to see do well in this format? What are you expecting to see do poorly? Is there any Pokemon that really just jumps out at you as a, hey, you got rid of all the things I don't like. I'm going to go start kicking some butt now. Let me know down below in the comments. Maybe I'll give you a shout out in my next video. I don't know. I don't even know what I'm going to do after this. I'm probably going to edit this. <laughs> so thank you guys so much for the support. And until next time, I will see you later.